Have you ever wondered how a character can move to a door and teleport across the map and have the screen follow them? With a little bit of coding experience, you can make this happen. My name is Kyle. I'm an independent mobile app developer showing you the code and problem solving skills you need to build an app. At the end of the last video, the game was left off as a functioning app with a background and a character that can interact with objects through a physics simulation. This was a huge step forward, however all aspects of the game can still be improved, including the background. Currently, the background is just a picture that doesn't move. I'm going to change this by separating the cloud layer from the rest of the image. Here are the layers that will make up the foreground of the image. This will be saved as its own PNG, while this layer will be the clouds. The code will also be changed to display both images. The clouds will be added to the physics simulation as a sensor object with a linear velocity. As you can see here, the clouds are slowly moving in the background. Eventually, the left edge of the image will appear. What I want is to create the appearance of an endless stream of clouds passing by. First, I'll add in a second image of the clouds. Now you can see these high-speed clouds are seamlessly moving until the left edge of the second image appears. Next, I'll add in a runtime event listener that loops the clouds back once they venture too far off to the right. Here I created a new group, Cloud Group. Both cloud images are added into it. Lastly, I need a line of code that calls the runtime event. As we can see here, the clouds are still flying across the screen. This time, however, we do not see the left edge of the image, giving it the appearance of an endless stream. All of the clouds were saved on one single PNG file. In one of my other games, Animal Invasion, each cloud was drawn and saved as its own image. This allowed me to move each cloud at its own speed. All of the artwork here was drawn by freelance artist Daria. I will post a link to her work down below. Freelancers are a great way to complete your game because they will create custom assets that fit your project. Fiverr is my favorite freelance site to use. Here I can scroll through a variety of profiles where artists from all around the world showcase their unique style. Check it out, it is a great way to finish your app. Adding in a waterfall is the last thing I want to do in this section. Inside the scenery class I will create a new method that does this. I will also call this method in the main function. Now you can see a waterfall on the left side of the screen. I could also change this to a small waterfall. The controls I coded up in the previous video were rather difficult to use. I found myself frequently clicking the wrong parts of the screen. I'm going to change this up by displaying new images across the bottom. One to move Wukong to the left, and another to move him to the right. I will also enable multi-touch. This will allow the device to detect multiple events at the same time. The last step is to display a jumping image in the bottom right corner. Here I am testing the game out on my tablet. Wukong can now walk and jump in one fluid motion. However, when he lands, he does not resume walking. To fix this, I will create a new method, resume walk. This method will be called every time Wukong is walking, including the walking event. I also want to create a parameter that is set to true when the walking event is clicked, and false when it is released. Now, this parameter can be used when Wukong collides with a platform. It can tell him to keep walking, or to idle. Here, Wukong can walk, jump, land, and keep walking. He could even walk right off the screen. There are multiple ways to make the screen move with Wukong. I will create a game class that encompasses all other objects being displayed. These objects will no longer be called in the main function, but rather in the initialized method. Now I want to create a runtime event that detects Wukong's positioning and moves any object when Wukong gets too close to the edge of the screen. As Wukong runs towards the edge of the screen, the background, waterfall, and platform move along with him. There are some major issues here. As you can see, there is no background. And, more importantly, he's floating on thin air. This isn't right. 
First off, I want to create a stationary background. And to do this, I will remove it from the display group, and instead only translating objects that are within the game map. Now the background remains stationary. What if I want some parts, like the waterfall, to move with Wukong? These objects will need their own group, the waterfall group. They will be translated as Wukong approaches the edge of the screen. Perfect. Now the waterfall moves as Wukong moves. But what to do with the floating Wukong? Collisions in Solar 2D are detected based off the object's position. It does not consider the group's position. For this reason, I want to translate each individual object within the group, instead of the group. Now, as Wukong runs off the edge of the platform, he falls right off. The last step is to create a similar chunk of code that detects Wukong approaching the left side of the screen. As we can see in this simulation, when Wukong runs to the left edge of the screen, all of the necessary objects move along with him, until he falls off. No adventure game is complete without some danger and excitement. Spikes will be placed on the ground as an obstacle Wukong needs to avoid. This static object will stun Wukong, changing his sprite sequence to get hit. Additionally, he will lose health. As Wukong inches closer and closer and too close, Wukong is now holding his new sprite of Get Hit instead of returning back to idling. A sprite event listener can fix this. Currently, the collision between Wukong and the spikes is only detected when Wukong first comes into contact with the spikes. To improve this, I added in these yellow circles to detect the collision. This allows me to customize the number of times Wukong loses health based off the number of yellow circles. In addition to his stunning Wukong, the spikes also need to inflict damage. Wukong's health will be represented by a new group of images. Within the group will be a health bar. Its size will vary depending on his health. Now, when Wukong hits the spikes, his health will change, as indicated by the health bar. An extra line of code was added in to transition the transparency of the health bar. As you can see, the health bar is opaque and it becomes transparent. On the long levels, it is important to have rewards to keep your character going. A heart can be added into the physics simulation to heal Wukong when he comes into contact with it. Now after hitting the spikes, Wukong can rush back into the heart to heal himself. Now, for some excitement. This is something I have never coded up before. I thought it would be a straightforward task moving Wukong from one door to another. But, as you will see, I encountered some interesting bugs, and there are probably some more still out there. My goal was to create these two doors within the physics simulation that are linked together. When Wukong is at one of the doors and the jump EV is clicked, he will be teleported between the doors. Here, he will walk to the door, get set, and click the jump EV. And perfect. First try. That's what I thought. What happens when there are spikes in the way? Again, he will walk to the door and get set. Now when he travels across, something happens. It happens again when he travels back. Did anyone notice his health change? I will add in a new parameter that changes while he is traveling between doors. This will allow me to prevent him from interacting with spikes or hearts. Additionally, I improve the palm tree sprite so they no longer change size. This next piece is an interesting problem. The doors are set a far distance apart, forcing the screens to move as Wukong travels. And this happens. Going back to my code, to move Wukong between the doors I use this transition to function, instead of moving Wukong through the physics simulation. This transition to function did not appear to be compatible with the runtime listener that moved the screen with Wukong. Now things appear to be better. It's not perfect, but it's at least better. Building a mobile app is filled with problems and the reward of seeing your own progress. Each person will encounter their own unique path to completing an app. This video showcased my steps in building a screen scroller app and hopefully people found the progress being made entertaining. Please, if you enjoyed the video, Give it a like, subscribe, and tune in next time to see how Wukong will continue his adventure. See you later.